<laughs> What's up peeps? Today we're going to be talking about the cost of living in Chiang Mai and the do's and don'ts of how to spend your money from my personal experience. I'm Tina from Hangry by Nature and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more family friendly travel content like this. We'll be running through accommodation, food, transport, attractions and a few other little tidbits. make it clear that the costs are drawn from a family of four over a one month period and we also live in Chiang Mai during a low season time where prices generally tend to be a little bit lower for accommodation and things like shopping and attractions as well so do bear that in mind and also we lived in the neighborhood of Niman in Chiang Mai so this area is generally a hot spot. It can be a little bit more expensive for things like food and shopping there as well as opposed to if you were to be in a very local area. Accommodation because you need a place to live. We stayed in a 48 meter squared one bedroom condo that included living space, washing machine, beds obviously, a bathtub for the kids, um, a fully equipped kitchen as well as facilities like swimming pool, sauna and gym which was awesome. So we spent a little bit more as 800 US dollars for the month including utilities like internet, electricity and water but so worth it. You can definitely find cheaper accommodation starting at $300 a month for a studio condo. So from our experience do spend the extra little bit of money on accommodation you will get really awesome facilities like I mentioned swimming pool, sauna, gym, some even have rooftop infinity pools overlooking all of Chiang Mai so it is worth it if you have that bit of extra money to spend. For a detailed guide on how to find the perfect apartment in Chiang Mai make sure you take a look at this video above here our complete guide on how to find an apartment in Chiang Mai. Food! On average, for lunch, we paid about eight US dollars for the whole family. Dinner can be a little bit more pricier if you're eating out, probably around 10 US dollars for the whole family, and you're covered. I mean, that is still pretty darn cheap, but this is if you're eating at local Thai eateries. There are also Western food options, but they are slightly more expensive. So if you're looking at the price of brunch at a modern cafe, you're probably looking at similar prices to where I come from back in Australia around the same price so that is actually pretty expensive for Thai standards but I can tell you one thing the standard of food and the quality is almost well actually you know what I would even say it's slightly better and fresher but that's just me the standard of food hygiene that we've experienced are actually really high none of us got sick so that's a, that's a plus. For first time visitors to Thailand, if you're worried about the food hygiene, I would generally recommend going, jumping on TripAdvisor or Google reviews to see the reviews of the restaurants or the places you eat at before going there. But I mean, we've eaten everything from market food, street food, I, I eat everything, and none of us have gotten sick from it. As a general rule of thumb, don't spend too much money on highly rated TripAdvisor restaurants. The best food is what you'll find at local Thai restaurants, on the streets, at the markets. You'll find the cheapest and the tastiest and most authentic Thai food there is. Transport, getting around in Chiang Mai. We rented a scooter for the duration of our one month stay in Chiang Mai. That was the most cost effective option for us at 80 US dollars, including helmets and insurance for the month. And we didn't really have any hesitation on getting our kids on the scooter, Asian styles and whole entire family on the one motorbike. That's how we roll. Petrol is 
crazy cheap. It was probably about two or three US dollars to fill up a tank. One thing you have to make sure to get before you go to Chiang Mai is to get your international license sorted. They are pretty strict on checking both local and tourists. For more information, Google it. There's also the option of Grab, which is uh, the same thing as Uber. And on average, to get from Niman, which is where we live, to the other side of the town, Riverside, only cost us $5 a ride. Just to get around sort of close by, we paid no more than $2 to $3 for a ride. But the absolute cheapest way to go is to jump on a Song Tao or a red truck as they call it, which is like the Thai ride sharing concept, original concept I guess you could say, where you can get a ride from about $1. The only thing is that they may not take you to more distant places or it'll cost you a little bit more for that and it depends on which direction they're going. So if they are say going to one attraction, they'll pick up people that are going in that general direction. And of course there's also other options like taxis and tuk-tuks. Um, tuk-tuks obviously they were made for tourists so they are generally a little bit more expensive. But I mean, if you don't feel comfortable with riding a scooter, especially as a family, Grab and Red Trucks are your best options for getting around. They are pretty cheap and they're reliable and you can find them literally everywhere. So make sure you don't spend too much money on Tuk Tuks. Make sure you get the Grab app or jump on a Red Truck or if you're daring enough, hire a scooter to get around. That's the best way to save money on transport. The one thing you shouldn't skimp out on in Chiang Mai is forking out that money for attractions. Of course it depends on the activity you're doing, but we found most Chiang Mai attractions to be pretty cheap or pretty affordable or cheaper than what they would cost back at home. The ones that were probably on the higher price spectrum of things were Elephant Jungle Sanctuary, which is an absolute must do if you are in Chiang Mai, and the Chiang Mai Night Safari, but 100% worth the cost. For discounted tickets on the Chiang Mai Night Safari and the Elephant Jungle Sanctuary, which is the most popular non-cruel elephant sort of tour you can do in Chiang Mai, check out the link in the description below. Foreigners do have to pay a fee to enter some of the most popular temples in Chiang Mai, but it's close to nothing. Entry will probably cost you between one or two US dollars per person. All of the major malls in Chiang Mai also have really cool kids play areas. It costs a small fee to enter, probably around two or three US dollars, but totally worth it. So make sure you do spend the money on attractions. Some of the things that we did, like the night safari, the zoo, our kids still talk about it today and it's been months since we've been back. So they'll never forget those experiences, 100% worth it. The cost of other items we spent on in Chiang Mai. So generally medicine related things are pretty fairly priced in Chiang Mai and some of them don't need a prescription for. But in general things like dental, doctors, optometrists in Chiang Mai are really cheap. So, so much cheaper than back at home. One thing we couldn't do without was getting a SIM card for the month. Um, we got one with a higher data plan for $17 for the month. You could probably find cheaper, but we just wanted one with more data. We need all the data. Especially, you know, you need one if you're wanting to get grab taxis from different places or use Google Maps and things like that. Shopping! Shopping! <laughs> so we didn't really do a lot of shopping, so to speak, in Chiang Mai but they have a lot of international retailers that you'll find everywhere else like Zara, H&M and big retailers like that. The price is generally pretty similar to um, anywhere else but um, where you'll find the real bargains is at the local markets or the night markets and obviously the best of all at markets is you can get your haggle on. And that's it guys, those are the essential costs of living in Chiang Mai if you're planning to live there for a stint or take a longer holiday there. Now for a much more detailed breakdown of the costs that we spent in Chiang Mai, make sure you take a look at our blog article down below, down below, <laughs> down below where I break down all the costs and all the items, everything from groceries to food to transport that will give you a better idea down below. 
Chiang Mai is one of the most cost effective places to travel to or live in if you're planning to go somewhere a little bit more long term. And I hope the do's and don'ts help with your spending habits while you're here. Leave a comment below if you have any further questions about living in Chiang Mai as a family. Let us know below or if you've been, what did you think of it? Would you go back? We would, for sure, 100%. As always guys, Make sure you show us some love by liking this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos like these. Otherwise, we'll see you on the flip side in the next video. Over and out. Spinning out.